Hello, everybody. Welcome to a truly special show we've got for you guys tonight. It's a little bit of a surprise. We're talking about something I'm not sure we've ever talked about before. We're talking about everything you need to know about jobs and staff positions, summer staff positions, seasonal staff positions at the High Adventure Bases and at BSA's Council Camps. I've got a really wonderful guest with me tonight. It is Michael Johnson. He's the general manager of Seabase. Um, each of the high adventure bases have a general manager. So at home, you can think of this like a camp director. Basically, he knows a thing or two about the high adventure bases. Michael, thanks for joining us tonight. It's great to be here. And we're excited to share with you opportunities uh, for summer or perhaps even year round uh, employment opportunities at high adventure bases and local council camps. So let's jump in and get going. Yes, we are actually going to visit each of the four high adventure bases tonight. That is the Summit, Philmont, Northern Tier, and Sea Base. We're going to hear from staff there about different positions that are available, get a little glimpse of those really beautiful landscapes. And we're going to also talk about um, working at local camps. This blows my mind. There are more than 450 council camps. If you're looking for a role at one of those camps, you would want to contact your local council to get involved. If you don't know what that means, if you're like, that's Greek to me, leave a comment. Let us know what city you're in. Someone in the comments will be happy to let you know your local council, check into different jobs there, different camp jobs. If you are totally out of your element and you're like, what are you talking about? Camp jobs, high adventure bases, councils. What, what is this? Michael, I've got a question to start off the show. Sure. Why would why would somebody want to work at a high adventure base or council camp? What is it and why would you work there? It's just a great experience. I uh, served on camp staff growing up. I'm an Eagle Scout. And uh, those two summers at Williams Scout Reservation are just some of my fondest memories. Learned a lot, made great friends. It was hard work, uh, but it was very, very rewarding. It was an opportunity to give back. Uh, I also served on seasonal staff at the sea base out of college before it turned into a full-time job and different experience, but again, amazing. I learned a lot, great opportunity to grow as a, a young man or a young woman. You learn skills, hard skills, soft skills um, that help you throughout your lifetime. So if you're at all interested tonight, we're going to share with you some ways that you can make an application or learn more if you're not certain about making an application. But I encourage you at the end of this to jump in with both feet and give it a shot. Yes. And our viewers already get the gist of how to how this works. They're asking their right. questions. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. We're going to get to them. I actually want to get to one right now. Um, Divine asks, what's the minimum age to participate? Sure. For high adventure bases, it's 18 years or older. And all the high adventure bases are co-ed, young men and young women on staff and uh, in the program. Each council will have a slightly different age uh, requirement. Some may hire as young as 15, others may be 16. There could be some council camps that require you to be 18 and older. So for high adventure bases, you must be 18 or older. For local council camps, it may depend. That's the perfect answer. So also, if you're at home and you're like, what's a high adventure base? What's a council camp? You'll probably hear this throughout the show, and it may not make a lot of sense at the moment, but it will the more you get into this. There are four national high adventure bases. Um, they combine a lot of uh, different unique parts of the United States, different geography, different kinds of adventures you can do at these camps. And then there are also local council camps. I think we said there are more than 450. So if you're looking for something, you know, in your backyard, there's one of there's a camp like that. Or if you're looking to travel a little bit or maybe you live in the vicinity of a high adventure base, we can direct you to some links tonight to apply for jobs at those camps. Mm -hmm. I want to highlight Billy's comment. I love this. Um, he lives in West Virginia, so I'm thinking hmm, maybe he's interested in the summit. We'll get into that in a bit. He's interested in working at the summit on his days off. He's an EMT at a local ambulance service. That, I mean, it fits to one of our answers we're going to get to a little bit later about, like, how can this fit into your schedule? But without much further ado, I want to get to uh, see one of the high adventure bases and hear from the staff there. If you're watching, we encourage you to tag someone who wants a summer or seasonal job and might be interested in applying. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the requirements, what it takes to be a staffer. Do you have to have worked at a camp before? We'll get to all that. But before we get there, let's kick it off all the way up in Minnesota in the Boundary Waters at Northern Tier. Hi. 
The Quetico Superior Wilderness is absolutely remarkable. Very pristine waters, untouched forests. You can go places where you don't see people for days. Lots of great wildlife, beautiful scenery, wide variety of terrain, cliffs, lakes swamps, bogs, marshes, you name it, we got it. <laughs> the wilderness. Mm. When you first go into it, it's really easy to look at it like it's unforgiving. Um, like you're out there completely by yourself, like there's no support, and to an extent that's true. But once you actually get out there and you start getting good, at kind of navigating it and understanding its little quirks and intricacies and things like that, then it really kind of opens up and you're able to teach it a lot better to the scouts. It's just fast. Um, and that can be scary at first, but once you actually get into it, it is, it, that vastness is explorable. It's a lot of fun. So a lot of people, we have our check-in day when the crews come off road, probably the most stressful day of the week for a lot of people. But the thing about it is once your paddle hits the water, it is fine and everything kind of melts away from you and that's when you really kind of grow into your own person and your own interpreter and your own kind of level of wilderness instructor and outdoor educator. What I really really enjoy taking these trips out is the aha moments that you get from the kids and the adults alike. Um, whether it's learning how to hang a bear bag, whether it's learning how to appreciate a loon when it swims past you. There are just so many little things um, to kind of appreciate and learn how to appreciate out here. Because it's so different from some of the places where they come from. When you're 80 in a nursing home, uh, you want to be thinking about what you did up here. Because you make true impacts on other people's lives up here and you change lives. Taking crews of scouts into the wilderness is a privilege I don't take lightly. Um, it's really special to be able to be the one that takes them out into a place that's so special to me and get to share it with them um, and let it change their lives the way it changed mine. There's a degree of personal accountability that comes with working here and there's growth in that regard. But I think the biggest thing that comes from it is just what the wilderness can teach you. Um, a lot of what we do out here is based in the wilderness. And yes, there are times where you're on base for a couple days and helping us out with projects around here. But there are more times when you're out on trail showing kids and even their parents sometimes just how magical the woods can be. It's a pretty common expression working for the Boy Scouts, but your first year is for the place and your second year is for the people. Um, the first time you're here, you're here to explore. You're here from kind of a participant's perspective. You want to see what's in the boundary waters, you want to see what this place is all about. Um, the people are a bonus on top of that. Again, sharing and swapping stories is the whole undercurrent of what makes this place run. Um, but your second year, you know, you've seen a good chunk of the boundary waters, you understand it, it's still a big draw to come up here but the people really make this place what it is. Whether that's staff members, whether that's scouts, whether that's advisors, um, all those working in conjunction really make this a special place. Shout out to Northern Tier. Those were really staff members that you were hearing from. You could tell those were clearly not actors. Those were their genuine experiences. If you are ready to sign up or if you know of the perfect person who might be interested in working at Northern Tier, we have a URL up at the bottom of the screen, ntier.org slash jobs. That is where you can head to apply. Or if you just want to you want to see a higher level of what it looks like at all four high adventure bases, you can head to scouting.org slash outdoor adventures slash high adventure jobs. We'll be showing you those URLs throughout the show tonight. We also got a few great comments. I'm excited to share these with you, Michael. Um, Michael, another Michael, says, I won't say that Philmont summers were the best four summers of my life, but uh, heck, of course they were. What a wonderful summer adventure. I think a lot of people will share that sentiment when they spend a summer at a high adventure base. Absolutely. It changes your life. It really does. And some of the time people ask me, well, what do you really need? Skill set, uh, background, et cetera, to, to apply and, and be on either local council camp or... Uh, high adventure base. And it's really pretty simple. 
there are some positions that require very specific training or background. Perhaps, you know, if you want to be a dive master at, at Seabase, you've got to be certified in scuba. If you want to do aerial at the summit, you've got to be certified in, in ropes and um, aerial. But overall, the things that a, a young man or woman needs is, number one, a positive can-do attitude. Secondly, you have to have a, you need a willingness to learn. You've got to be open to all these experiences that you're going to have. You need to be a team member. Number three, you're going to be part of an amazing team that impacts the lives of thousands of young people. And you got to be part of that team. And you have to not be afraid of hard work. The days are long. They're challenging. There's weather. Uh, but it's very, very rewarding. And finally, you have to be willing to take responsibility for your area, your crew, your fellow staff members, your equipment. But if you have that, if you have that basis, you would make a great high adventure base or local council staff member. You heard it from Michael. Those are the qualifications that you ultimately need to apply. And then from there, it's kind of based on your skill set. And, you know, the teams at each of the high adventure bases and at council camps are going to guide you through each piece of registration and information that they need to get from you to set you up to make this happen for you. We've got that URL at the bottom of the screen. Again, we have a great question from William. He says, how many weeks will you typically, typically work at a high adventure base? Great question. Each high adventure base starts and ends at different times. However, generally, they're going to start by the end of May with staff training. So, for instance, Philmont begins their staff training around May 23rd. Uh, the sea base kicks off a little bit earlier. We're one of the earliest ones with May 15. Programs run all the way into late July, mid-August, or in the case of the sea base, the end of August. So you could conceivably spend 10, 11, 12 13 weeks of your summer on staff at a high adventure base. Now that's different if you're on a local council camp, those may operate three, four, five weeks. Um, but when you figure that in at a high adventure base, it's a pretty great summer job. And one question that uh, we've not been asked yet is what kind of money can I make at a high adventure base? Anybody interested in that? Well, here we go. I talked to my fellow general managers today and in general, on average, all the high adventure bases start around $300 a week. That all, then you also have room and board and your meals are taken care of. Uh, uniforms are provided. You might have to purchase some additional uniform pieces. But across the course of a summer, you can do the math. If you spent 9, 10, 12 weeks uh, at that salary or greater based upon tenure, experience, skill levels that you might bring to the table, you can make more. So you can have a great summer job at a high adventure base and local councils. They also pay well. So to reiterate that you're getting paid, you know, starting at $300 a week and it goes up, you know, I think we saw 600, you know, different yep. amounts a week. But you really got to factor in your housing is covered. Your food right. is covered. There's not right. many jobs like that, especially I feel like that that's great pay. Um, yeah. And then also you touched on this earlier. This really can be a resume maker. It could lead like you to a, a lifelong career. You know, you could yes. work at a camp your whole life or you can work at, in some capacity for Boy Scouts of America your whole life. Truly, people have careers um, and with Boy Scouts of America and at camps. Or I'm thinking it's totally the kind of thing that would stick out on your resume. Like mm -hmm. you have it on your resume, your future or potential employer sees it and is like, Philmont? She right. worked at Philmont? Right. I love Philmont. And that's going to be just like the perfect talking yep. point at your interview. It is because when you as a staff member at a local council camp or a high adventure base, you are responsible for a crew, a program, their safety, their experience. That is an amazing thing to put on your resume, and it's a great uh, conversation starter. You're totally. right. Totally. Yep. Ben, ben asks, can I work at camps as a 15-year-old? Ben, check out your local council camps. Correct. See if, if they're hiring 15 and up. Some are, so you could jump around, um, but yep. definitely start with your local council. See what's available. Now, I think you're going to like this next part, Michael. We're going to go somewhere close to your heart. 
and close to you warm, geographically. Warm and sunny down here in the Florida Keys. Yes, we're going. So we we were up in Minnesota with Northern Tier. Now we're going south to the sea base and the blue waters of the Florida Keys. My name is Julia Bartlett. I've worked here on staff for five seasons now. This will be my fifth season. I've worked three summers, a fall, and now a spring. Um, and I'm currently the Marine STEM Commissioner. So yeah, my name is Dustin Radke. Uh, my first summer at Seabase was 2016. 2022 is my fourth summer. I've worked as a uh, Keys Adventure Bait down at the BEC. I've also been a dive master, and currently I'm working as a Seabase Ranger. Currently uh, on the Ranger staff, um, we're mainly doing maintenance and uh, landscaping around base, and that's about a Monday through Friday job, and uh, we're doing plumbing, electrical, any sort of odd jobs or fix-its that need to, need to happen around base. Uh, when I work as a dive master, uh, mainly I've been on the scuba liveaboard program, so we'll take six participants out um, on a catamaran. We'll go out for four nights, five days, and anchor out at sea and go diving northward uh, up along Isla Mirada and Key Largo. As a Marine STEM Commissioner, I oversee the coral nursery that we have here at the Britain Environmental Center. My first season at Sea Base, I was a Keys Adventure mate, and my second and third summers here, I was a Marine STEM mate, and at the end of my last summer, I was also able to run a couple out-island programs. I would say my number one reason for working on this staff is the impacts that you yourself can have on the scouts. A lot of us notice that when they first come in, you know, they have their heads down low, they may not be confident in themselves. And so you as the mate, you kind of give them this helping hand and kind of just these little tips to help just watch them grow as a person. You're just nudging them a little bit to see what they can create themselves. And I think that's the coolest thing that we can do here is offer them these super amazing adventures where we're taking them on all these boats and some of them have never been on an ocean before, I've never been on a boat before, and they see this incredible underwater world and that just blows their mind. And for them to come back onto the boat and say, oh my goodness, I saw a jellyfish, or just little critters that maybe someone who's here every single day kind of just loses that magic. Um, it kind of just reminds me of why I do this all the time. The things that have been most rewarding for me about being uh, on staff here at Seabase is normally seeing how the confidence level of our participants grow throughout the week that they're here. By the end of the week, they kind of grow into themselves and you see these crews form into friend groups. And our goal, mine and my captain's goal, is uh, that everybody leaves the boat a little bit more confident than they stepped onto it at the beginning of the week. So I work at Seabase because I came here as a scout when I was 16 years old and I did our coral reef sailing program. And ever since then, I wanted to come back and work as a staff member. Seabase has also been a great way to work towards certifications like my dive master certification, which I use currently and I've used for about the last year. And then also currently I'm doing the examination and paperwork process for getting my captain's license. Another thing that I've been able to accomplish as a Seabase staff member. At least the way it's been for me, I've been able to accomplish so many goals that I've had since I was a kid. And I've been able to stick close to the scouting values and the scouting, the scouting principles, which is a, a huge guiding force in my life. Seabase provides a lot of opportunities other than just working in your one position. And so whether it's you want to be a mate, whether it's you want to work in the office, or whether it's you love cooking and you want to work in our galley and cook amazing food for the scouts, or work in our ship store and get your retail skills, or just different types of opportunities, Seabase really has it all. And it's, it's truly been life-changing. Uh, if it's something that you're even thinking about doing, honestly, send in an application. Uh, this place will change your life for the better. It truly is magical. Great staff. They, yeah. they do a wonderful job sharing. We have some fantastic questions here. One of them was, I don't turn 18 until midsummer. Can I apply? My advice is apply. Uh, we do at the high adventure bases have kind of a staff at the first part of the summer. And some of the time we bring some staff in until, you know, later in the summer. Um, also, Dustin uh, shared there his overall experience, dive master, Keys Adventure mate, and now he's a ranger. So you may be excited about going to a high adventure base or a local council camp and, and doing program because that's exciting, but it takes an entire team. There's food service, retail, facilities, marketing, communication, 
um, it, it takes it takes everybody to make a camp or a high adventure base work. So check out those opportunities. Yeah, um, and Troop sixty five is acknowledging what so many people out there are wondering: food at Sea Base is awesome. <laughs> Yes, it, it is. Better. No, yeah. no, Sea Base is unreal. I mean, looking at that video is unreal. It's like you're watching a Pirates of the Caribbean movie or something. Um, if you guys at home are interested in applying for a staff role at Sea Base, we've got a URL at the bottom of the screen. Head yep. here, get your applications in. I love it when she said, if you're even thinking about it, apply, which I definitely think applies to. Uh, one Austin who commented, he wants to work at Philmont. He has a little bit different of a schedule. He's not sure if it'll work. Austin, apply. We're going to yep. get into schedules in a little bit. Yep. I, I do have another question for you, Michael. This is something sure. that I think is funny. Um, we're thinking a lot about like youth staff. And I know a lot of our, our commenters are, you know, 18 years old or a little bit older, a little bit younger. Is it true that there's a group of retirees who volunteer at Seabase? <laughs> there are, Yes. So we do offer opportunities in the off season. All the high adventure bases do something in the off season program, conferences, et cetera, as well as volunteers. We have adult volunteers uh, here now. As a matter of fact, they're painting our scuba pool, Bob and his wife, Elaine. Uh, and they've been here enough. They come back every year to help us out. So uh, I saw another uh, comment where somebody was asking about volunteering and maybe had a sailboat, et cetera contact that specific high adventure base and the first step as we've said so far is get an application in because that provides all the information in each base you'll have the opportunity to review what positions there are and then you know give us your top three or four and then it goes through the process and we see if we can make it work there are so many more questions to get to as well. If you guys are interested at all in applying for a job at a high adventure base, we've got the URL up at the bottom of the screen right now. You can check out one of the four high adventure bases. We've covered Sea Base. We've covered Northern Tier. We'll talk more about them uh, in a bit. We're going to actually cover two more high adventure bases in just a few minutes. But besides that incredible opportunity, um, we want to talk a little bit about the opportunity to work potentially closer to home um, at a local council camp, which those are really awesome, too. You won't believe what these look like and, and the amenities offered at council camps. There's actually over 450 local council camps operating this summer. And we're going to check out some um, comments from some staff at those camps. First up, I think we have a uh, shout out from the Atlanta Area Council. Hi, I'm Tim. I've been working at BERT for five years. I started as a CIT at the age of 14 in um, Copen Climbing, and then I worked in the first year camping program until I was old enough to work in aquatics. Uh, some of the life skills that I've learned here um, were CPR, lifeguarding, um, and management. But as a part-time ranger, I've gotten to learn some other skills like groundskeeping. Uh, camp, is, camp is five weeks straight that you get to live with your friends, you get to have fun, but for me, the biggest reason why I keep coming back is because the scouts, I really like to watch them grow and learn and experience things for the first time. And knowing that we as a camp family got to make an impact on that scout's life is something that means the world to me. Pretty cool. Just a few shout outs about what is unique about working at a council camp. There are opportunities in every part of the country with 450, more than that, council camps, there is something close to you. Um, you could be home on the weekends, which might be right. different than if you were you know, working across the country at a high adventure base. So it might fit your schedule better. There are short and long seasons. So there's flexibility for other activities or events you may have this summer. Um, I think that that applies to you, Maria. You asked if you can't work the entire season, should you apply? First of all, yes. And second of all, definitely at a council camp as well. There are opportunities for you. And then Michael has talked about this, but what's unique and distinct to council camps is often 15 and 16 year old plus is the requirement for ages to work at these camps. So if you're a little bit younger, it might work mm -hmm. out better for you to take Great. a look at a council camp. Absolutely. We've got one more council to take a look at. We're going to go to the heart of America and hear from them about working at summer camp. My name is Blair Van Vipper. I'm here to talk about why you should join summer camp staff. I've spent the last three years uh, serving on camp staff at Atro Bartle Scout Reservation. It has been one of the best experiences of my life. I've made many new friends 
and have a new home away from home with the uh, camp staff and sawmill. It is one of the best ways you can spend your summer giving back to those uh, younger scouts and allows you to continue giving back to your community and involve in scouting even after achieving your Eagle Scout. I love hearing from real staffers, real youth around the country. Uh, you can see the passion. Like again, like I said earlier, you can tell they're not actors. Um, if you're interested in working at a council camp, you'll just want to head to your local council's website and inquire within. There's going to be information on how to contact them and see what camps um, have availability this summer. If you want to work at a high adventure base, we've got a URL at the bottom of the screen. You can head there, check out the four high adventure bases and start applying. You can apply yep. tonight, guys. <laughs> yes, you can. But we are, we're all in the midst of uh, hiring and uh, checking with the other high adventure base GMs. We're about approximately halfway, maybe a little bit more. There's still opportunities. There's still open positions. So as we've said already, if you are even the slightest bit interested, apply and let's see what happens. Well, and that's no small undertaking, right? The hiring season is serious because, I mean, how many people are hired each year? At uh, Philmont, it's 1,200, about 250 at the sea base, uh, 200 at the summit, and about 125 at Northern Tier. So it's a big process. So there are a lot of opportunities yes. out there. Um, if you're just tuning in now, we're talking about the amazing opportunity to serve on the seasonal staff and the summer staff at one of the BSA's four high adventure bases or a local council camp. Um, shout out to everybody watching. I would encourage you to tag somebody in the comments who might be interested in a seasonal job or a summer job. Um, Deep the asks, will there be a recording of this session available that can be shared? Her son has a conflict, so he's missing this. The great news is yes, this video will live right here forever after we're live you'll be able to rewind it fast forward it you know take it share a clip whatever you want to do but right now what i would say is tag people in the comments so that they're going to see this get a notification and, and tune in um one more time if you're looking to sign up you re you're ready to apply you can head to scouting.org slash outdoor adventures slash high adventure jobs um, Seabase really fired up the comments. We started getting a ton of questions, a lot of people <laughs> shouting out Seabase. I just love it. Um, and yep. then Trish had a question uh, saying, uh, asking kind of like, is there anything to do with astronomy at any of the high adventure bases? I imagine that, that, yeah, go ahead. I don't know exactly. Trish has stumped me, but, uh, my guess would be perhaps out, out at Philmont. That's um, exactly, yeah. 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 That's what I'm thinking too. Um, and you're in luck, Trish, because we are about to head to Philmont right now and take a look at, I mean, beautiful Cimarron, New Mexico. It's been the starting point of so many scouting adventures because it's the oldest high adventure base. Um, thousands of scouts head out there, remember it for a lifetime. And supporting them is a small dedicated army of seasonal staff. Let's check it out. Coming out here where the landscape is dotted by mountains and you trade your cell phone for like a postcard and stamps and the metro for a pair of hiking boots for a summer. You're looking at this and saying, this is beautiful country. How can we take just seeing a pretty mountain and make it more? You have to learn how to work as a team with 1,100 people. I don't think that anyone has ever been in a job that every single person loves their job this much as we do. Philmont is by far the best job I've ever had, and I think it's because of the mistakes you're able to make and the room you have to grow. I'm never over my head, but I'm doing things that may be out of my initial comfort zone. And people are there to help me to learn, but also to reach the best of my ability. Philmont is so unique in the sense that it empowers people to like think on their feet, to be flexible, to be problem solvers. 
Those leadership experiences are things you can't necessarily gain at a young age in other places. The connections you make, the friendships you build, the things you get to do. None of my other jobs can I say that I've gotten to go climb mountains with my coworkers. There's a saying out here that you come to work at Philmont your first summer for all the mountains, but then you come back every summer after for all the people. It is just such a meaningful experience. The bonds and the friendships you make with these people are just the sort of thing that you never lose. Call it cliche, but you get to know these people just about as well as you know yourself. I think Philmont has made me a more confident person in myself and in my ability to do things I don't know how to do. It's taught me how to love and it's taught me how to learn. That video fired me up. I mean, unbelievable sights. And, and we're seeing a common theme of these staff were saying, you know, you go work there one year because you're just kind of into the location, you know, you want to get outside and then you become a part of the culture. You, you make family there. I don't think it's, do you think it's an, un, an overestimate to say it's, it's life changing? It, it is life changing. And what you learn, the friends that you make, you will keep for years, decades. Uh, a lot of the viewers here tonight and our staff at High Adventure Bases or local councils, they're very young. They're early in their lives and some of the time getting, you know, sharing with a young person, hey, these are experiences and friendships that will be with you the remainder of your life. Um, it, it's true. It will happen uh, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. You will remember that experience and you will still have friendships from those summers you spent on camp staff. We see that in the comments. So many people shouting out their past experiences at high adventure bases and council camps. Um, if you are interested in applying for a job directly at Philmont, We've got a URL up at the bottom of the screen. You can apply there. We've also got a URL where you can check out all four high adventure, high adventure bases that we are talking about tonight. We've covered three. We talked about the Northern Tier. We talked about Sea Base. We talked about Philmont. We've got one more to cover in just a few minutes. Um, now, Michael, this is a good question. Any advice okay. for a first year camp staffer who isn't super outdoorsy? Well, yeah, there's opportunities uh, at all of the high adventure bases that are more or less outdoorsy. And, uh, uh, but you do have to realize that um, the entirety of the experience will have some degree of, of outdoor uh, experience with it. But there's retail, there's food service. That Philmont video was fantastic showing what staff members did in order to be able to, to uh, feed and take care of tens of thousands of participants. So even if you're not real outdoorsy, even if you've never been on camp staff before, even if you don't think of yourself as um, you know ready to go at one of these high adventure bases or your local council camp, if you are interested and if you have those five things we talked about earlier, apply, see what happens. That's the way amazing life experiences unfold you give it a shot. Yes. And I think it, you know, kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone if you're not outdoorsy, because there is something in you that's really going to benefit from the, the outdoor experiences. We yeah. definitely believe that here at Boy Scouts of America, but there's something for you. I guess it touches on too. Um, we've talked about, I see a lot of people saying my son would like to work here. My son would be interested in this. I've worked there. I mean, girls can apply too, right? Absolutely. All the high adventure bases are co-ed. Uh, staff and participants. Uh, I believe that most, if not all, local council camps are co-ed staff as well. Uh, can't certainly, I, I can't vouch for all the local council camps. So that's where you want to check and just see. Makes sense. So if you want to get more information on your local council camp, head to your local council's yeah. website, head to the camp website and, and get in contact with them. Um, I want to ask too, so you kind of highlighted what it takes to be the ideal camp staffer. I think you gave us five kind of ideal characteristics. Yep. What were those again? Sure. You've got to have a can-do attitude, a positive attitude. Secondly, you have to be willing to learn. You're going to learn a lot in this role uh, at a local council camp, 
high venture base, you got to be open to learning. The other part, and they touched on it in the Philmont uh, video, you've got to be a team member and, and do well as a member of a team, support others and understand that there are times to lead, there are times to follow. Fourth, you've got to be uh, willing to work hard. The days are long and uh, it can be some really challenging but rewarding work. And finally, you've got to take responsibility for yourself, your program, your participants, your equipment, and your role and job on staff. Those five things. That's great. I mean, those are certainly requirements, but they're like something you can find in yourself. So if yeah. you're listening to this and you think that you can muster that up in yourself, head to the URL at the bottom of the screen. That's scouting.org slash outdoor adventures slash high adventure jobs um, to get your application in for one of the four high adventure bases. Um, I saw a comment a few minutes ago that was somebody who I think she was thinking, oh, my son might do a local council camp because he's really into fishing. And that makes yeah. sense. There's definitely opportunities there. But I thought of a high adventure base that might have opportunities for him as well. I was thinking of the summit. We talked about our oldest high adventure base. Now we're talking about our newest high adventure base. Yeah. None other than the summit. Another place that's just unbelievable. Looks like a movie. Rather than explain it, I think we should just head out to the summit and see it for yourselves. Let's go. My name is Jess. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I work here seasonally at the Summit Bechtel Reserve. So over the summer, I work as a big zip operator. I've been doing it for three years. This year, I'll actually be assistant manager. And on average, we send about 6,000 participants through, including scoutmasters, troop leaders, and scouts themselves. So I came to Summit at first from a friend who worked in shooting sports. And my first summer here was just so magical. I saw so many animals, so many bugs, and I met the most amazing people ever. And just working with the scouts every single day is such a learning experience, even for me. And it's just a joy to see them so happy and excited to be outside. The Summit offers a variety of jobs and we really cater to everyone's interests. So we have jobs ranging from housekeeping to office admin and to more outdoor focused jobs such as uh, the zip line and climbing, shooting sports. We have jobs ranging from trek leaders like ATV trek, river trek. We have a skate park, mountain biking, fish camp, really just about anything that you could imagine or ever want when it comes to outdoor rec. I think my favorite thing about working at the summit as a big zip operator especially is getting to ride the zip line every day because not many people can say they get to ride down a zip line every single day. So it's just it's fun. I love it. Everything about it. Okay, so my favorite memory from my sum first summer working here is honestly just getting to spend time with the people I work with when we're not at work. So just watching movies in the pavilion, going out and exploring the Nuremberg Gorge with them, and just spending time with the people that I met. So if you're looking for an awesome summer job, you should come here because we're literally 15 minutes away from the Moose National Park. You get to change the lives of scouts and help them overcome their fear, get better experiences outside, and you get to meet people that you work with and become friends with, and they become just like your family. Hi, my name is Calvin R. Jones. I'm from Maryland, and I work as a BMX and mountain bike instructor. Being a member of the wheel staff, I was able to learn the fundamentals of biking as far as like, keeping the pedals level fingers on a brake and a safety procedure. During that time, I was able to instruct scouts of all age ranges to learn how to ride the bike and ride paths upon the mountain uh, safely and how to ride the pump tracks also as safely as possible. So on a day-to-day -day working on wheel staff, we would be able to ride with the staff members and teach them how to ride the mountain track safely and the uh, track course safely. Uh, Every day would be a learning process and teaching. So since the first time I came to work at the summit, I was drawn to the nature and being outdoors. Uh, I grew up traveling a lot, and this was a great way to be able to be close to nature and meet a lot of people from a lot of different places. And being able to communicate or being able to connect with people from all over the place was uh, a way for me to relate. So one of my favorite memories from being a bike instructor was being able to help a kid learn how to ride a bike for the first time. Uh, it turned out great. At the end of the day, he was able to go on a track course on the BMX bike, and it made my day because it definitely made his day. And all his friends was cheering him on, and it was a life-changing experience. So if you're looking for an awesome summer job or just a great way to spend your summer, come down to the summit because it has a lot to offer. It's uh, all outdoors. You get to participate in all the activities that we have here and you get to meet people that will become lifelong friends. 
and you won't regret it. <laughs> okay, so real talk, real question. Sure. You're telling me that somebody's getting paid three hundred dollars a week in the summer <laughs> to man the big zip. Yes. Is and they so get to go down the big zip every day. I've been down said. the big zip once and I was really scared. So I've got a great deal of respect for her uh, as a staff member. Yeah. You you get paid to be in some of the most amazing parts of this country, doing incredible, unique jobs, being part of a team that impacts last last year in 2022, the high venture bases served 43,000 young men and young women. So you're part of a team that changes lives, 43, 44,000 young men and women. And you make lifelong friends and you pick up skills and abilities and you grow in ways that you never could have imagined. Um, they also touched a little bit on, uh, you You do get time off at high adventure bases or summer camp. And uh, at as Dustin at the sea base pointed out, he uh, was a Keys Adventure mate, and then he got his scuba certification while he was on staff here. And, and so each base has some opportunities for you to enjoy the surroundings and, and do some things on your, your off time uh, so you can in, enjoy that, grow, et cetera. So, but you're right, Gina, it is an amazing job. You're getting paid, room and board. You get a uniform, uh, an incredible experience. That's why I come to work every day. I know, I know. I'm thinking that it was dangerous for me to host this because now I'm going to apply four different high adventure bases to work this summer. So I'll, I'll have to work that out with my boss later. What I'm going to say is if you're in the slightest bit interested, Gina, what should you do? Apply, apply, apply. Yes. So if you want to apply to one of the four high adventure bases, scouting.org slash outdoor adventures slash high adventure jobs is the place you want to head. If you want to apply for a job specifically at the summit, which is where we just took a look at the high adventure base, you can head to summit bsa.org slash jobs to apply directly to the summit. Okay, we're wrapping things up. The comments are amazing. A quick shout out to um, a BSA leader who's going on his 40th Philmont Trek. He just turned wow. 80. Pretty awesome. That's amazing. Before we go, I, I have two questions for you. One, yeah. of course, I want to say we should, if, you'll, if you want to address anything that we haven't covered today, please feel free to. But I was just curious if you would also kind of end the show by telling us your story one more time, because I think that that's a real testament to the opportunities that can come from working at, at a, a summer camp. So in terms of, sure. you know, how did you yeah. get where yeah. you are? So I was in scouting as a youth in the Eagle Scout. I was very involved in the Order of the Arrow. And my first experience with the High Adventure Base was the Order of the Arrow Philmont Trek in 1985. And yes, I am telling you how old I am. But I was a regional chief back then. And that was my experience with Philmont. Graduated from college uh, in Oklahoma, grew up in Oklahoma, had never seen the ocean. And a classmate of mine said, hey, you got to apply down at the sea base for a summer job. So I did that. At the end of that summer, uh, I stayed on uh, as a seasonal uh, staff member. It turned into a full-time program director position. So I started my 30 plus years with the Boy Scouts of America at the sea base. I went around the country with the Boy Scouts and a number of different councils, served as a scout exec. And then about six and a half years ago, the general manager job for the sea base opened up. And uh, I thought, man, that's really a pretty tough, nasty job. And I'd hate for somebody else to have to go do it. So I'm going to apply. I'm just kidding. It was uh, kind of a dream come true that it all lined up. So I uh, kind of come full circle, but uh, a great, great experience. And I still have friends that I made when I was on camp staff at William Scout Reservation, west of Enid, Oklahoma. Still have great friends to today. We were on staff together. And my first time at Sea Base, those summer camp uh, staff friends that are with me today. So it can change your life. It can open some doors. You may or may not end up working for the Boy Scouts for the you know your entire career. Who knows? But you likely will gain experiences, knowledge, skills, and grow as a person. It's a wonderful opportunity. Your story's cool, too, because like you said, it took you to a total, totally different part of the country. Yes. I'd never seen the ocean until I drove down to the Florida Keys to start a summer job. 
pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you're watching at home, people are saying, where can we apply? Where can we apply? Well, we dropped this link in the comments so you can look in the comments and just go ahead and click to head to the URL at the bottom of the screen. Or you can go to scouting.org slash outdoor adventures slash high adventure jobs. Um, behind the scenes, Brian, would you mind if we ran through the URLs for each high adventure base one more time? So if you want to go to the Northern tier and apply for a summer or seasonal job, this is the URL for you at the bottom of the screen. If you want to go to the wonderful, beautiful, just idyllic sea base, we love it. We're both big fans. You want to head to bsacbase.org slash employment. If you want to go to the oldest, just iconic high adventure base, Philmont Scout Ranch has staff jobs as well. philmontscoutranch.org slash jobs. And last, because it was just the newest, it's definitely not the least, the Summit has jobs for you as well. summitbsa.org slash jobs is the place to go. And also, I keep saying summer jobs, I say seasonal, but uh, most of these high adventure bases have people on staff year round. We so do, yes. If you're not free in the summer, still apply, reach out, get yeah. some details. Um, what, what have we missed, Michael? Is there anything else we need to say before we let everybody go and start filling out their applications? I think we've covered it. And uh, as you've said, this is a recorded video, so you can share it. And uh, you've seen in the comments a lot of responses from the High Adventure bases, uh, perhaps answering your question. Again, just go to the, the base websites. And uh, there's also at every base on their website, there's a staff directory. So if you have a question about you know, you're not ready yet to uh, apply, go to uh, go to that base website, find a staff member, send them an email, they'll respond. We'd love to see you on staff out at a high venture base this summer. We'd love to see you at your local council camp. It's where scouting happens. Lives are changed and uh, you're going to love the experience. Yes. One last shout out to the council camps. If you want to apply for a job closer to home, or maybe you're younger than 18 and curious if you're in that 15 year old to 18 year old range, like, Hey, can I get a job? I also need weekends off. Yep. You might be able to score that kind of a role, head to your local council ca camp and submit an application or, or talk to those folks to see what they have to say for you. This has been just such a pleasure. We were lucky to get to have you and spend, you, you took some time out of your evening to talk about high adventure based jobs with us, which is what you do all day as well. So thank you so much, Michael. Happy to be here. Thank you for the invite. Okay, everybody get to applying. We'll put that URL up on the bottom of the screen for the four high adventure bases as we say goodbye and see you next time. See ya.